We'll have more on the earthquake as new information becomes available, but back home, the protests in Baltimore following the death of Freddie Gray, who died last Sunday from a spinal injury sustained while in police custody, turned from peaceful to violent last night. Tension rose following a march through downtown Baltimore that drew thousands of people. After that, protesters clashed with police officers, police car windows were smashed, a convenience store was looted, and some 1,200 policemen were deployed to keep the peace. Twelve arrests were made and fans were kept inside the Oriole Ballpark at Camden Yards until things outside the stadium settled down. And we are joined now by Congressman Elijah Cummings, uh, who represents Baltimore. Uh, Congressman, this is, didn't happen in Baltimore. It happened in your neighborhood. In my neighborhood. So you were there last night. Yes, uh, I was. Bring sorry. us up to speed. Well, uh, we had a situation where, of course, Mr. Uh, Gray died um, a week ago. And I think the thing that upset so many people was the fact that uh, his young man, we still don't know exactly why he was arrested. We do know that he was uh, hollering out for aid. He was not given aid uh, after being arrested. And we also know that he was not seat belted. And the next thing we knew, a week later, uh, Bob, he was dead. And a lot of people are very, very frustrated uh, as to uh, trying to figure out what happened here. And it's very upsetting. Well, uh, uh, you were you were there. Yes. Uh, what what triggered this violence? I mean, this started out peacefully. Well, I got to give it to the citizens of Baltimore. Uh, I was there all day, and it was very peaceful all day. Thousands of people, and then at the end, there were uh, a few people who said, "We're gonna we're gonna turn uh, this city down. We're gonna close it down." And the next thing you know, we had a few people, uh, mainly from out of town, to come and to start beating up on police cars and throwing all kinds of projectiles. But the fact is that for the most part, uh, it was a, a, it could have been been worse. Um, but again, um, this is uh, this whole police community relations situation. Uh, Bob is, this, is is the civil rights cause for this generation, no doubt about it. This thing here, the cell phone uh, with the camera, this has caused a whole new uh, situation where a lot of the police interaction with citizens is being recorded. That used to not be the case with when you and I were coming up. How did uh, how did they get this stopped last night? Um, basically, what we did was the mayor, to her credit, and the police commissioner uh, uh, went on air and told people to uh, go home. I, I went on air and asked people to uh, go home and tell people to uh, email and uh, text their relatives that were down there. A lot of them left. Um, and the next thing you know, then, of course, we had the rain that came along, and that helped. But pretty much, and then we had a lot of people in our community, and I got to give credit to the people of Baltimore. A lot of community leaders uh, were in the crowd saying, this is our house, we will protect our house, and, and asking people not to be violent. Like I said, it could have been worse. One, one decision that was made was to keep the fans who'd gone to the ball yes. uh, game to see the Orioles play, uh, they made decision to keep them in there and not let them out until this thing uh, I thought that out. I thought that was a, a smart idea because there was... Uh, quite a, a bit of confrontation right outside the stadium. And for everybody's safety, uh, I think that the, that was the appropriate thing to do. Are you satisfied with the way the chief of police and the uh, uh, the mayor uh, has handled this case? After all, I mean, we're talking about this, this breach between uh, uh, African Americans and police departments. We're seeing it happen uh, in other cities as well. Uh, uh, I think that they're doing the best that they can under the circumstances. That's why, uh, but we have d determined, that is Senator Mikulski and Cardin and, uh, and yours truly and our delegation, Maryland delegation, have asked the federal government, the Department of Justice, to come in and take a look at our department from top to bottom. They've agreed to do a civil rights uh, investigation, uh, and, and we feel good about that. But we've got to take this department apart and try to figure out what is wrong and what is right. Um, this is a, a significant moment, Bob. If we don't correct this now, it, it, only, it will only get worse. You, you just said this is the civil rights challenge of our time. No doubt about it. And the police officers who have uh, been suspended uh, with pay, is that okay with you? Or um, I, I, I believe in fairness. And as a lawyer, uh, that's very important to me. 
Um, but one of the things that we have uh, pushed for is that they move this investigation as fast as, po as possible, make it as thorough as possible. And it's our understanding that they're going to be, that is the mayor and, and the uh, head of police will be bringing to the our state's attorney uh, information this coming Friday, and then the state's attorney will, will go from there. Are, are you satisfied at this point with the way this investigation Yes, I am. Is and I'm, I'm also pleased that the federal government is involved, too. Well, Congressman, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. I know this is a tough time for you, and I expect you'll be going right back to Baltimore when you leave here. That's exactly right.